Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are talking about a new release of Unity. And there's not a really ton new here because this is actually an LTS or long-term support version. And the entire idea behind this is it's going to get no updates. It's going to bring something really needed to the Unity ecosystem, and that is stability. Now they do one LTS version a year, and they're changing their schedule, so they're only going to be doing two text stream versions as well. So if you're looking at a version to start with Unity now, that you're working on a project that you're going to ship in a year or two, the LTS version is probably the one that you're interested. In. And there's a bunch of technologies in this release that are uh, fundamental to Unity. They've been percolating or developing for the last year or two. A lot of interchange dependencies that were kind of causing it to be a little fragile. They are now shipped and ready to use in this release. So we're going to look at some of those things. But first, we're going to take a quick look at Unity itself. So here you can see this is Unity 2019.4 LTS. Uh, this is the guy from, uh, what was it, the, the Heretic uh, in the typical HDR scene. Uh, so this is using the new high def render pipeline. And as you can see, we can get much nicer fidelity in Unity. It's actually kind of gross. <laughs> actually, that's extremely gross. Uh, but what's one of the major things here is the HD render pipeline is now considered to be prime time. The other thing you'll notice if you look around in general, there has been a facelift. It's a really minor facelift, but it is an important one. First off, I'm capturing this in 4K and I can actually read it. So HDPI, uh, HD, um, PI support or high def monitor support is definitely a nice thing to see here. You see this in 4K and it's actually usable now. So that is one of the things that happened in the 2019.x releases. On top of that, another big change that we've got, for better or worse, is right here, the package manager. More and more of Unity has been moved off into packages, and that's where some of the fragility has come from. We've had all these interdependencies of packages, and we're waiting for this version or that version to come about and come of age. They are all here, and you manage them using the package manager. This has got new functionality as well, things like the ability to install from Git. There's also a bunch of things that go on behind the scenes. Okay, I'm going to zoom out from this guy's extreme head close-up, because that's creepy. Uh, there's uh, new things here, uh, new features we're going to see but I can't really illustrate them, but we've got things here like um, uh, asset pipeline in the background. The asset importer was completely changed. So the process of getting your assets into Unity, it should be faster. It's the beginning of a new set of features. But the nice thing again is with the 2019 LTS version, your file format shouldn't change. There shouldn't be updates. All you will get is bug fixes, security patches, that kind of stuff. So your project won't break with each new release. All right, so let's look at some of the marquee features that came into 2019. Then we'll come back to the, re the release blog in a second. So the biggest one I mentioned earlier on is HDRP. And this has been in development for, God, I think it's two years now. Uh, and it was partially, it was two things. The lightweight render pipeline, which is now called the universal render pipeline. That is the pipeline for uh, targeting mobile, uh, H, uh, HTML targets, and so on. Uh, and then we've got the HD render pipeline, which is going after high-end PCs, consoles, and so on. And there's been a giant leap forward in the graphical capability of um Unity in general. On top of that, this is all built on the scriptable render pipeline, so you can actually create your own uh, pipelines if you wish. So you can tailor the rendering process as you see fit. Uh, so that's one of those things that has definitely taken some time to get here, and a lot of the tools uh, that have been developed that we'll see in just a second were dependent on the uh, scriptable render pipelines being in place. All right, so that's a big one here. Next one is Dots. Dots is a technology stack that's been working for a while. It's the whole idea behind it is to make C Sharp faster. This is a, a bunch of different systems. It's the burst compiler, the job system, uh, and so on. So it's a way of decoupling your code using C Sharp or a subset of C Sharp to make code as fast, multi-threaded uh, as possible. So you can basically do a whole lot more. It's a move away from the whole game object mono behavior way of doing things, but they are slowly starting to actually add migration tools as well. So you you can start moving your older code over to the new dots technology stack and have some of the conversions happen for you. So dots is the underlying technology for a lot of the new technologies. Basically everything had to be rewritten into a dots version. And a lot of that stuff came to maturity in the 2019 point X releases. So next up, we've got the visual effects graph. This is for doing uh, special effects, VFX graph nodes uh, directly inside of Unity. You can do high end visual effects, particle systems coordinate the effects together. And you see it's using this, uh, visual programming language to do so. Uh, that was released in 2019.3. It is considered stable and ready to go in the 2019 LTS version. Another thing that they've done is the shader graph. The shader graph is a way of creating shaders visually, so you don't have to write any uh, HLSL or GLSL code. Basically, you just use drag and drop system like you see here, and you can get a preview of your shader in action. That is also dependent on the HD render pipeline and the universal render pipeline, and it now supports both. Originally, I think it only supported the HD render pipeline and it took some time to get there. So 
Shader Graph is now considered ready for prime time. Uh, another area of improvement, this is more at the core level, is they've really changed the way that prefabs work. And prefabs are really fundamental to Unity, and they're more so now, because basically prefabs are a way you could make something like a tree. So now what you could actually do is make something like a leaf. Make the leaf into a prefab, and you can nest it in another prefab that you call tree that uses multiple leaf uh, prefabs. So it gives you a way of uh, improving your workflow, organizing things better, uh, boosting productivity, making more reusable content and so on. So you can now uh, have prefabs nested inside of other prefabs and your tooling support for it has also been improved. Uh, and then we've also got love for the 2D tooling system. So 2D uh, got actually quite a few improvements and they were kind of just uh, improvements across the board. There is a new 2D renderer that works with Shader Graph um, and the new programmable pipelines. Uh, we have new 2D animation tools, including the ability to set up bone rigs. Uh, we've got 2D lighting improvements. We've got 2D shader graph support. Uh, we've got tile map improvements. We've got sprite shapes, so you could do things like create train and bend them using the uh, control points of a Bezier spine. And then we've got improvements to the sprite tools as well. So 2D got a lot of love in the last couple of releases, and they are considered ready to go Unity 2019 LTS version. Uh, so that is basically it. Now we're back at the... Uh, the blog post about it. We covered off a lot of what it's all about there, but basically the whole idea behind the LTS versions is this is where you go if you don't want to be on the cutting edge, also known as broken all the time. So if you don't want each new release to break your game, you want to go with an LTS version. Uh, so the LTS version of Unity contains everything from the previous three tech stream releases, all the fixes and improvements we added to Unity 2019.3 since it was released. Similar to our previous LTS release, the focus for 2019 LTS isn't new features, API changes, or enhancements, but defect rectification and usability upgrades aimed at improving stability of the product. So basically what that means is bug fixes only. So they do one LTS release a year. It is the most stable version. So if you are starting a game now, there's your recommendations. In fact, what they say is if you're currently working with the 2017 LTS, they highly recommend upgrading to the 2019 LTS. If you're using the 2018 LTS, what you're missing out on is the script will render pipeline, visual effects graph, shader graph, nested prefabs, addressables, and the new TD tools, uh, 2D, uh, 2D tools, as we just covered in a second. Uh, we have, again, improvements across the entire editor, uh, the uh, asset system update, the asset import pipeline updated, new quick search, new shortcut manager. Also, we've got the package manager improvements that I talked about earlier. And we got some things behind the scenes, incremental garbage collection, IDE support and development moved to packages. A lot of things moved to packages for better or worse. Uh, .NET was upgraded from 3.5 to 4.x. Uh, PhysX, uh, let's see, what else do we got in here? Again, we covered a lot of these things, shader graph, visual effects graph, uh, terrain tools got improvements. Actually, there is a terrain team now working on terrain stuff. But again, fundamentally, the key thing with this particular release is this is the one to go with if you want as much stability as you can get. And we can see here in 2020, they're planning to do two tech releases. And then I suppose the third will be the next year's LTS version. So they are slowing down the release schedule. And I actually think that's a good thing because they've been shipping so much stuff lately that a lot of it is just breaking. So what we need to do is kind of consolidate the new changes, make it stable, make it better, make it nicer. And that's kind of where they're going with this. Now, the nice thing that we've got going on is if you go in here now with the LTS version, when you go into the Unity Hub and you go to add a version, the default version, the specified version, if you haven't already installed it like I have, is going to be this new LTS version. It is marked as such as an LTS version. Now, keep in mind, they still have their pre-release version. So these are the two tech streams going on through the year, the 2020.2 and the 2020.1. Those are still out there. Pre-releases, again, uh, are really unstable, but there's going to eventually be release versions of these, but they won't be LTS versions. So that means things could have happened like they may have break the file interchange format or all your shaders may need to be recompiled or they changed uh, code behind the scenes, that kind of stuff. And if you want to avoid all of that, that is ultimately why you use an LTS. So basically, in a nutshell, that is it. That is Unity 2019.3 LTS. And I think this, again, is something that is desperately needed uh, because uh, stability, uh, consolidate all of the new features and functionality that they've brought together. They, they need a, a stable constant point in the timeline, I guess we could say. And that is potentially what the LTS version has to offer. So let me know what you think of this in general. Have you been using the newest releases? Uh, have you been bit by some of the incompatibilities or their new modular package approach? And do you look forward to the idea of an LTS uh, release like what we just saw here? 
Personally, I think LTS releases of Unity are exactly what we need to see right now to try and take all of that technology they've been working on in the last couple of years and just make it stable, make it work, make it actually usable in a production environment. So if I was starting a Unity project today to actually go ahead and ship it 100%, I would stick to the LTS. I would just try to ignore all the stuff coming in the future and just go with what works. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.